Currently, one of the bikes I'm reviewing is the Otsu Wahila C, which has adjustable chain stays. You can flip it from short at 420 to 440 on the long end. So it's one of those rare opportunities where it can mess around with the chain stay length on the same bike with the same wheels and all those things and get a better impression of how chain stay length affects the bike handling. Is one chain stay length better than the other? Well, find out in this video. Welcome back Pathless Peddlers. And if you're new to the channel, if you're into the non-competitive side of cycling, the supple life, riding party pace, you have found your people, hit that subscribe button. So the bike I rode for this video is the Otso Wahila C. I've got a separate re review coming up for that. So if you're interested, be sure to hit that subscribe button. What it has on the rear on the bike is what they're calling a tuning chip, which you can flip from a long to a short chainstay setting. I've been riding this bike the last couple of months, both in the long and in the short setting over the same roads and the same terrain. So I can get a sense of how the different chain stay settings affect uh, the bike's handling and performance. So before I jump into long versus short, I should probably define what is long and what is short. So let's start in the middle. Typically I would consider a medium slash all rounder chain stay length to be about 435 to 430. Short chain stay bikes tend to be around 425, 415. And what I mean by long are bikes with chain stay lengths in 440 to 450 and beyond. So how'd the bike ride in both the long and short chain stay setting? Well, let's start off with the long chain stay setting. In its longest setting, the chain stay is 440. And the feeling I got is that I was really in between the bike. For me, a good visualization is kind of like being in a hammock between two wheels. What this felt like is that the acceleration was generally pretty smooth. The bike came up to speed, but it wasn't in these kind of jagged short steps, but instead ramped up to speed. Another thing I noticed when the bike was in the longer uh, chain stay setting was on steep, loose climbs, the rear wheel held its traction better. When things got over 15 and 16% and I was standing and climbing, there was just a little bit more grip on the rear wheel and it wouldn't break traction with the dirt. Another thing I noticed is that the bike has what I'm gonna call a slower natural turnover. And what I mean by that is if you're standing and climbing and throw the bike left and right, it wants to destabilize at a slightly slower rate. The bike is a little bit more stable and it takes more effort to throw it left and right. So again, when I'm describing these things, it doesn't mean it's necessarily good or bad. It's just different. And lastly, the biggest thing I noticed is that when descending on rough stuff, the bike had a sensation of surfing over the terrain rather than being slapped around when hitting rocks and other features. So it made for descending a lot quicker, a lot smoother, and a lot less sketchier. So flipping the chip to the short setting, what did the bike feel like? So whereas in the long chain stay setting, where I felt like I was hammocked in between two wheels, in the shorter setting, I felt like I was sitting on the rear wheel. So instead of that hammock metaphor, imagine sitting on a rocket. In that shorter setting, I felt like the bike accelerated in shorter bursts. So I don't know if the bike was actually faster overall compared to the long chainstay setting, but the way in which it got to speed felt a little bit more staccato with these really short, quick bursts. So again, not saying that's good or bad or that's any faster, but it just got to that speed a little bit differently. On short, steep, uh, loose climbs, I felt like it took more cognizance, it took more awareness, to position your body weight so I wouldn't lose traction on the rear wheel. Whereas it was a little bit easier to keep that traction on loose terrain when it was long, I felt like it was easier to break that traction if you weren't paying attention when it was short. Another big thing I noticed is the natural turnover rate of the bike just seemed quicker. So again, when you're standing and climbing and you want to throw the bike left and right to either accelerate or go up a hill, it just does so a little bit more naturally and faster. So again, not saying that's a good or bad thing, it's just what happened. <clears throat> In terms of going downhill, I definitely felt things got a little bit spicier. So whereas when it's in the long chain stay setting, I got the sensation of surfing over rough stuff in the short chain stay setting, I got knocked around a little bit. So definitely a lot more feedback from the terrain when it was in the shorter setting. So then one of the first questions you're gonna ask is can you really tell the difference and for me, I would say yes. I've you know, ridden enough bikes on the channel that can kind of pick these things out. I think even for someone that hasn't ridden a lot of bikes, the chainstay uh, difference in this particular scenario is 
big enough that you should feel at least something. So yes, to me, it's definitely noticeable. No, I didn't have the opportunity to do a blind test because we don't have that GCN money where I can hire a mechanic to, to swap the bike 10 times over the course of a day. And I know the next big question after that is if one is better than the other. So historically, I've always preferred shorter chain stay bikes just because of the way uh, they make me feel faster, even though I may not be faster overall. There's something about the quickness in the way the bike turns over and that general spiciness in the handling. I will say, however, over the course of this year, uh, especially after riding the new Ritchie Outback, it made me reassess uh, my preferences for chainstay length. I found that whereas you know a short chainstay bike definitely gives me the sensation of climbing faster, that if I look at the overall length of the ride, I probably am faster overall with a longer chainstay bike because when descending, since the bike feels more stable and less sketchy, I can descend faster and with more confidence. And I would make up more significant time in the descent than any perceived uh, added acceleration or quickness in the climb. So is one better than the other? I don't think so necessarily. You can definitely have preferences. I think in a pure paved road situation, I think I would prefer a shorter chain stay just because it does feel quicker to accelerate. But in mixed terrain situations, in riding gravel, I'm starting to shift my mind and, and move more towards the longer chain stay just because I do appreciate that added smoothness over rough terrain, the way the bike doesn't get slapped around as easily, and also just the, the added confidence in descending. I'm already kind of a, a timid descender, so all the help I can get in descending is much appreciated. So what do you guys prefer? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any other questions, leave those in the comments. And as always, if you like this content, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and keep the supple side down.